What's up everybody? True Boxing here. Thank you for coming back to get hit with the truth. So today we're doing the um, what's next for former two division world champion Danny Garcia as he comes off his debut victory our debut yeah debut victory um, at 154 pounds where he defeated um, the always tough uh, Jose Benavidez Jr. Pretty solid 12 round unanimous decision no doubt. Danny looked good. He did. He counterpunched well. Um, uh, good combinations. Uh, landed some good shots. Moved well. And um, he might be a little undersized for 154, but he looks like he's ready to compete there at uh, 33, 34 years old. So good, solid win. We're going to run through the top 10 and see what, what possibly could be next for the former two-division champ. We start with number one, Jermel Charlo, the undisputed champion. Now, I, for one, would not be surprised if Danny fought a guy like Jermel, but I'm not sure the fight happens next. Jermel is uh, is lined up to fight Tim Zhu in a mandatory title defense. After that, I think a lot's going to be riding on if Crawford and Spence fight. If they fight and Crawford wins, I think Crawford could very likely move up to 154 and challenge Charlo next. But if Spence were to win or the fight doesn't happen, period, that's where things get interesting, and I wouldn't be surprised if Danny signed on to fight Charlo. But I think Danny is going to probably try to get one more fight in before he steps up against a guy like Charlo. So that's just my opinion. I, but I would not be shocked if Danny took on a guy like Charlo next. That's the kind of fearlessness, also big fight mentality that Danny Garcia has. So again, not going to be surprised there. Next up, Ryan Castaño, another guy. I would not be surprised if Danny fought him next. Now, this is a tough fight, but if Danny take a, took a page out of the playbook of Charlo, and I think in terms of boxing ability, very similar styles here. The difference is the power. Jermel Charlo is a natural 154-pound fighter. He brings serious power at 154, where Danny Garcia, we don't know the kind of power yet he brings at 154. So would he be able to keep a guy like Castaño, who's a buzzsaw, off of him? I'm not so sure, so I'm going to lean towards the no. But because they're both PBC guys, not going to be surprised if a fight like that did go down. Brian Castaño wants to erase the loss to Charlo, wants to get back on the winning track. What better way to do it than against a former two-division champ with a good name like Danny Garcia? We'll see. Number three, the undefeated WBC interim champion, Sebastian Fundora, not likely. Fundora is a mountain, a mountain compared to Danny Garcia. Just a bad matchup as Fundora is for almost everybody at 154. So I don't see this fight happening, even though they're both with the PBC. Number four is the undefeated WBO champion, Tim Zhu. Um, Tim Zhu likely gonna be fighting uh, Jermel Charlo next for the undisputed title. Now, if Zhu were to beat him, things get interesting. Um, not, I, I wouldn't rule it out if Zhu were to beat Charlo, which I'm not completely ruling that. You know that that, that could happen, but I wouldn't completely rule out that Zhu might pick a guy like Danny Garcia in his first defense. He's got a name. He's a former champion. I wouldn't be surprised. I'm gonna lean towards the less likely, just because Tim Zhu might look somewhere else, but also. I think Charlo's gonna beat Tim Zhu, so that's why I don't think the fight happens. Number five is former champion Tony Harrison. This fight is very interesting. I would not be surprised if this fight goes down. Tony Harrison is a good fighter, a former champion, and he's got an, an entertaining style, as you saw in the two fights against Jermel Charlo. He can box and he can punch, and he was at the fight. So a former champ like that, Danny might wanna test himself against somebody like that before he fights your Charlo, uh, you know, a Charlo at 154. So I'm thinking that one could be very possible right there. Uh, definitely maybe the most likely option of all the ones I've named so far. Um, number six, contender, former world title challenger, Erickson Lubin, not seeing this one next. One, it's a bad matchup for Danny because Lubin's a good southpaw boxer, but also Lubin coming off of just an absolute beatdown against Fundora. I don't think it would make sense for Danny to take a risk against a guy like that. So I don't see that one. Um, number seven is Magomed Kurbanov. Kurbanov got a nice win over Patrick Teixeira, but I don't think um, 
a fight with Danny would make sense for Danny because Danny has so many options that are PBC guys, and this is a PBC division. Why go outside of the PBC? I'm not seeing that one. Um, number eight, Liam Smith, a contender. Same thing as Kurbanov. Smith's got a little bit more of a name. He's, uh, yeah, but he also is Eddie with Eddie Hearn and, and Matchroom, and I just don't see the PBC and Matchroom come together when Danny has so many PBC options. Um, number nine, uh, tied for ninth, uh, Terrell Gachet. This is not actually a bad matchup. Tim Zhu just beat Gachet. Gachet has lost to Arislandi Lara. He's lost to um, Erickson Lubin. So Danny might say, fuck it, I, I, I'll show you what I can do against this guy. Gachet didn't look bad, kind of got an awkward style, but I don't think Danny would completely be against it um, as he continues to get better. So I'm not gonna rule that one out. Then you got Sergio Garcia. Not seeing this one. Garcia's coming off of back-to-back -back losses. One to Fundora in a close fight. The second to Tony Harrison in pretty much a one-sided fight. Danny would have to equal that, uh, what Harrison did. And, you know, I'm not sure this fight sells for Danny. So I'm going to lean towards a no. And then, yeah, well, Patrick Teixeira has dropped out of the top ten following the loss to um, that he just recently had to Kurbanov. So another option that's not being spoke uh, of uh, on this list because he's not officially at 154 is a potential title shot against Arislandi Lara at a catchweight of 155. Lara can still make 154 or 160. He's increasingly frustrated with the fact that he cannot get anybody to fight him at 160 even at the age of 39, anybody big. Um, part of that is because he holds a regular belt, not an official belt. Um, I believe after the Triple G fight, the WBA is likely going to order um, Triple G to fight Arislandi Lara. Now, if Triple G does not follow through with that fight, Lara gets upgraded to full champion, and why not make a catchweight fight against Danny Garcia? Danny would be down for it. He mentioned that fight, and, you know, I really could see Danny fight him. So, uh, a lot of moving pieces. Danny really has a lot of options, but there's a lot of risky options as well. But I think, in all likelihood, um, I think the Arislandi Lara fight is a real possibility for potentially you know, like December or January area for the middleweight title. And then I also believe at 154 that Tony Harrison's a, a solid option or a guy like Terrell Gache. So we'll see what goes down, but that's the what's next on former two division champion Danny Garcia following his debut in victory at 154 pounds against Jose Benavidez Jr. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, smash the like button, leave a comment, or subscribe to the channel. I appreciate any and all support. This is True Boxing. You've been hit with the truth.